no lies, no distortions, just the facts and the truth about issues that matter. Facts First with Christian Esqueda. Good evening guys and welcome to tonight's episode of Facts First. Ako po si Christian Esquera. As always, gusto pong magpasalamat sa inyo sa inyong patuloy na pagsuporta dito po sa klase ng journalism na ginagawa natin. Okay? Uh, before we proceed with our very special interview for tonight, I myself is very excited. No? Gusto ko munang batiin nyo ilang mga masugid natin tagapanood at tagapakinig. Uh, mga nagpapashoutout. No? Una si June Lucero. Sabi niya, Hi Christian, me and my wife are regular and loyal listeners. Please greet my wife, ayan, si Gianna Lourdes, Canada, celebrating her her birthday on Thursday, October 27. Thanks and more power to your program. Ayan. Happy birthday in advance, uh, Miss Gianna Lourdes, Canada. Pinapabati ka ng iyong, buting, ng iyong asawa, si June Lucero. Then also I'd like to greet my, ano, my, uh, <laughs> ano to, yung mga in-laws to, no? Talagang very, you know, very supportive din si Tita Carmelita Trinidad. She's visiting from the US. Nasa, nasa Pilipinas siya ngayon. We had dinner last night and um, nice to see you po. Yan. Shout out po kay Tita at saka po Kinafe and June Cruz. Pati na po kay uh, Mr. Mike Bernardo from Philadelphia. Okay. As mentioned, gandang ngiti ko ngayong gabi, no? Yan. Bakit? I'm a big fan of the work of our special guest for tonight. And um, tulad ng sinasabi ko nga sa kanya kanina before we went on air, pinanood ko yung kanyang On The Job, tapos yung On The Job Missing 8 miniseries. And ilalabas yung uh, movie version ng uh, on the job missing it. So, hindi na akong papatumpit-tumpit. Alam ko, excited kayo, no? Napaano pa nga ako, eh. Napa-teaser pa nga ako ng reels, eh. No? First time kong ginawa <laughs> for this interview. Okay din pala, no? <laughs> I'd like to introduce to all of you and welcome to our program si Director Eric Mati. Good evening, sir, and thank you for joining us on Facts First. Good evening, Christian. Uh, excited to be okay. here. Okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> kami rin excited and dami mga bati dito, no. Mamaya ako na babasahin yung mga comments niyo, no. Ito direct. So basically, yung movie niyo, no, dalawa yan, no. On the Job, uh, which was released in 2013, tama ba? Tapos yung On the Job, yes. The Missing Eight. Ah, uh, ito yung official entry natin sa Best International Feature Film ba? Sa Oscars, yes. tama po ba? Oscars. Okay. So, so what differentiates uh, basically between the the mini series sa pinalabas sa HBO at saka itong ano? Uh, ilalabas na movie version ng Missing Eight? Well, right after uh, 2013, no, we we showed on the job, we distributed it in North America and in 11 other territories. Uh, when we did the sequel, we were really thinking of coming up with another film. But then, at the tail end of finishing it, yung pandemia nagsimula. So, so we were stuck with uh, cinemas being closed. Hindi kami makapalabas sa sinihan. And uh, we were thinking, how do we... Ayaw namin maluma yung project, no? Uh, we were thinking, maybe we should pivot into coming up with a series. So uh, we, we looked at the material and discovered that we could actually make a six-part series on it. So... It happened almost simultaneously because before it even launched on HBO as a series, uh, Venice Film Fest also picked it up in competition in last year's uh, edition, no, 2021. So, parang uh, so so now there's two versions that happened. There's one that's the complete film, which was what we intended originally, and then the series, which included the first on the job edited into six episodes. Uh, but we've never had the chance, because of the closure of our cinemas, we've never had the chance to show it as a full film in, in cinemas. Mm -hmm. We sent it around festivals. Maraming kami pinadalhan. Pero we've never had the chance to show it publicly here, share it with our audience in the Philippines. And this time around, parang meron, meron chance, no? Uh, this is in preparation for uh, the Oscars. Uh, we needed to show it 
uh, nationwide for for at least seven days. So at least uh, when that happened, we were given a chance to uh, show it exclusively on Ayala Cinemas for eight cinemas. No? Mm. Gano ka haba, sir, yung, ano, yung movie version? Though? <laughs> That's what I was avoiding to talk about because <laughs> uh, part of the part of the options earlier because the, the film ended up being three hours and twenty eight minutes, and okay. it's a really long film. Although, uh, just to put it into context, uh, all the Avengers Endgame singled out episodes are also three hours and a half long. No. Irishman is also three hours and a half long. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, um, a lot of the superhero are almost three hours long. You know? uh, even Tenet is, is around that length. Uh, but, of course, theaters would complain if it's three hours and a half. You know? I'm just glad that Ayala allowed us to screen the entire length of the film as it is. You know? mm-hmm. uh, it's three hours and a half. Um, following the story of uh, at least three major characters. Mm. Sino to? Sina si Soy, si John Arcelia. Sino pa? Soy, which is a journalist mm-hmm. um, uh, going through a transition once when he found out that his colleagues in the office disappeared mysteriously. And then the other one is a prisoner who sometimes uh, moonlights as a gun for hire. And how he realizes uh, the state he's in and the kind of journey he also goes through. And then the mayor of the town, which is uh, Dante Rivero, Mm -hmm. who um, kind of holds a strong grip on a province uh, and is in a transition also uh, going into national politics. Mm, ito yung ano na yung fictional na lugar yung La Paz no although kuna pa yeah. yung movie yung series very familiar no kahit sang kalumingon merong ganong character eh no <laughs> ito incidentally <laughs> di ba and unfortunately pinatay si ano si Kapur Silapi isang hard dating broadcaster na no yeah. ang dami ko po nakuha ang comments dito sa program even na social media sinasabi yung script nila dito kay Per Silapi quote and quote on the job yan eh you've heard that <laughs> Of that also. And uh, ano yeah, na naisip nyo? Been, Parang bigla nag yung yung movie nyo. Oh, hmm. I've been tagged several times. So I don't know uh, if life imitated art or art imitated life. No, uh, uh, I don't know if there really is... Uh, knowing how these things happen, I don't really know if uh, the middleman is really from the prison uh, or it's just part of the script. Um with, with uh, the, per, the death of Percy Lapid because in a research middlemen are usually from outside um, I, I think if, if, if we discuss how much of reality was based in all the on the job uh, because it's mostly research based uh, when, when I got wind of that concept and started to research on the story we we found out that no one could let anybody go in and out of prison if it doesn't involve any of the prison officials. And usually, in the prison officials are military, uh, are, 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 are from the military. Former military. Oh, former military yes. people. Oh. Uh, so much so that in, in the first, on the job, the issue with Piolo Pascual's character is really with uh, this this sort of military cartel that was involved in the death of his father, you know? mm-hmm. because uh, all these prisoner for hire, uh, anything that concerns uh, the penitentiary, whether it's local or national, involves the military. And usually, in in the way that whole operation works, is a middleman would have a connection inside the prison. But the middleman never is from prison because Mm -hmm. uh, the middleman has to attend meetings, has to sit down. I think the death of the middleman is this this, uh, uh, term they use, uh, which is called a stopper. 
So if, if there's someone who's involved in in killing, in ordering a kill, he will not be the same person who will hire the prisoner. So the prisoner will be down here, the one who who is involved and who wants to, to get someone killed is up here. Down the line, there will be two or three other people, which are called stoppers. Because when the prisoner gets caught and this and he he squeals that this is the guy he worked for, it could not directly be connected to the one on top because there are mm. several layers. Um, w- w- hence the term stopper. Mm-hmm. So dito hindi ko convinced na yung middleman na tinuturo ay nasa loob. Kasi pwede rin siyang stopper in the colloquial sense na pag tinuro mo yung middleman sa loob at patay na, hindi tapos na. Uh, yes, yes. So, oh. and, and also, um, earlier I was mentioning, I don't know if it's life imitating art or art imitating life because maybe this whole story also is dependent on uh, not really connected to on the job, but I mean the whole idea that, yeah, just saying it comes from prison, right? Uh, so that it's easier, uh, it's easier said than done, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yung, yung binabanggit yung mga kataga na ano, no? uh, life imitating art or art imitating life no? di natin alam kung saan nagsimula eh. kasi I suppose yeah. yung on the job storyline was based on reality no? na pinagsama-samang realidad dyan eh, no? tapos nangyaring kay Percy pero nung una nyo na, ano, na, na encounter parang nung nabaritaan nyo may pinatay na broadcaster eto yung script na parang lumalabas no? para ba nagulat kayo teka ito yun eh <laughs> parang <laughs> ito nga ito nga the, uh, parang scary siya, uh, creepy yung pagkakwa niya, yung uh, how close it is to to the new on the job because uh, it's not just any guy who was gunned down, but it's actually a uh, journalist and on the job, the missing aid is really about journalism so so parang there's a major uh, character in Jan Arcelia which is also a journalist and his life is in danger. Mm-hmm. So parang more than before, even before the middleman story came out, just the similarity of Percy's death and having a gunman shoot him, even if we don't know if that guy came from prison, uh, yes, it's eerily familiar. No? Mm-hmm. Dito sa, ano, this, uh, first on the job, how did you... Um, decide to do a movie about that. Uh, tapos, it, oh, mm-hmm. what kind of research was involved? Kasi ano yan eh, hindi siya simpleng, ano eh, simpleng story, ano? Yeah. At ang maganda ron, talagang realidad yung lumabas eh, no? Hindi siya yung parang yeah. canned uh, movies in the past na ito may political thriller na ganyan, di ba? Ito napakalalim eh, so many layers involved. Mm-hmm. Um, well, at, at first, I, I was pretty, pretty young when I stumbled upon the story, I was still doing uh, uh, a bit of TV. And then one of our service drivers who came from prison, one day on, on one of those moments where everyone's waiting for something to happen on a set, started talking about, you know, Derek, I Paano lang ako nabuhay doon? Ay, uh, kuminsan, pinapalabas ako para bumaril. Uh, tinanong ko pa nga, magkano? Sabi niya, swerte na maka-5,000 ka. Kasi, siyempre, chance mo na makalabas. What, what stuck with me is really beyond the money. Sabi niya, uh, masaya, lang kami, masaya lang ako na nakakalabas ako. Uh, and sometimes... Kahit ano pa yung dahilan. Uh, Oo. Oh, oh, diba? mm-hmm. So, Yon. So that stuck with me, and I came up with a with a rough storyline. But the problem with the storyline that I made is it's only based on how much imagination I could come up with. Parang iniisip ko lang lahat. Ah, okay, kung lalabas sa preso, ganito. So parang it's it's not grounded on anything real. So mm-hmm. after several drafts of that. Nag-isip ako na baka dapat uh, I, I need to embellish it with 
with what really is happening on the ground. So that's when I started talking to consultants. So I had a military consultant. I have a consultant from the police. Um, I have a consultant from the Bureau of uh, Jail Management. No? Uh, I even went and visited several times dun sa BJMP, no? uh, just to get a sense of it, just to get the feeling of being in prison. And from there, uh, me and Michiko Yamamoto, who eventually write the, wrote the ent entire script, um, uh, came up with a more, yung parang hindi lang siya cinematic, kundi parang mm -hmm. it really is based on something that, that is uh, tangible, uh, na, that, that the plot points aren't just uh, taken from other movies, kundi uh -oh. taken from, from something that, that really resonates, no? in the in the context of the story oh, so very so uh, very authentic oh, oh. very authentic well, yung characters eh doon sa ano doon sa on the job missing eight why, why did you decide to do a but tama bang tawagin siyang sequel oo oh, oh, sequel yeah oh, oh. why did you decide to do a sequel or dati na yon in the works na yon ang binubuo niya pala yung una yes so we started working on on the job the missing eight probably around 2017 but the research took really long. Ang, ang simula niyan, Christian, um, I was toying with three. If you look at the idea of on the job, it really is about a sector in society. Uh, we pick a sector in society and then we show everyone what kind of a job uh, they do. So what kind of moral dilemmas they encounter, how difficult it is to stay righteous and to... Alam mo yun, it's not just mm -hmm. about doing the right thing, but I mean, balancing act of uh, the moralistic decisions that they make on the job. Mm -hmm. diba? So on the second, on the sequel, I was toying with the idea that beyond the prisoner for hire, the prisoner gun for hire angle, which is like what on the job, the first on the job was known for, I needed to talk about another sector in society. So three sectors, we chose three sectors in the beginning. And I was trying to decide which one of those we should focus on. So one is gambling. One is uh, medical malfeasance. Uh, all these, uh, all these um, organic tablets that come in from nowhere, from India mm -hmm. and from China. Unregulated. FDA. And then, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. And sometimes a government official is involved for bringing it in. And then journalism. When we were doing the research, we were moving towards gambling. But then there's this article I read when uh, Trump uh, won and Cambridge Analytica was connected to the winning of Rodrigo Duterte in the elections and how they used the same strategy they used in, in Trump's winning, they sort of did a beta test with uh, Rodrigo Duterte. That became so interesting to us, writers and filmmakers. So eventually, I got rid of gambling, I got rid of medical malfeasance, and just went in and focused on journalism. Now, uh, going in, we were quite uh, conscious about there are two uh, that the first one has a very crime thriller feel to it, but mm -hmm. with involving journalism in it, in the second one, it could be uh, a lot more investigative and less of a dynamic uh, cat and mouse thriller. Uh, so okay din ako because I hate sequels that parang tinatawag siya na sequel pero hindi naman pala talaga sequel kasi parang same format lang. Nilagay lang siya sa setting. Parang Mission Impossible, di ba? Pag nanood ka ng Mission Impossible, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, parang pare-pareho lang, di ba? May problema mm -hmm. sa simula, mag-regroup sila, may mawawala na kasama, alam mo yan? Uh -huh. So, ito ko rin, nang iba yung tone ng second one, which is more uh -huh. investigative, uh, more slow burn, no? Uh -huh. uh, so, Doon na kami napunta, no? Sa journalism. 
Now, the gambling, I never let go of it. Season 2, which we're doing now with HBO, Season 2 is going to be about gambling. Season 2 ng ano? On the job? On the job, The yes. miniseries? Ah, yes. okay. Wow, gandang balita yan. <laughs> Kasi marami uh, nabitin, including myself, doon sa first miniseries. No? Asa meron, gambling itatake. Yeah, we're, 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 I'm gonna shoot it May next year. May, meron so, bang characters na magka-crossover or entirely different uh, set of characters? Um, Joel Torre will come back. Dennis Trillo is coming back. Uh, we're, we're also bringing back uh, Lot Lot, uh, Jan Arcilia, mm-hmm. Joey Marquez. No? Oh. Uh, but then it will be a totally new uh, jump-off point Uh-oh. in terms of the story because it's gonna. Uh, I'm also bringing back the daughter of uh, Joel Torre, which is Empress. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, you're which, a law student. Ah, uh, uh, which is where the story is going to start. No? Okay, Empress, mm. which at this point, pa nasa lawyer nasa. Not so, hindi pala namatay si Dennis Trillo kasi rin sa ending ng miniseries, di ba? He, he was walking away, gusto niyo umuwi. Oo, maganda pa yung nangyayari. Alam mo ba in the movie, pan lang, konting trivia, he was shot more than what you saw in the in the series. Ah, ganun it, ba? <laughs> I was shooting it, ang dami niyang bina, binaril siya na sobrang dami. When we were editing it, napanood namin ulit, buo. Sabi namin, parang patay na siya kung ganyan kadami yun. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> siya mabubuhay. <laughs> so sa edit, binuwasan ko na yun sa lagay na yun. <laughs> Ilan ba tama niya officially? Parang tatlo? Tama ba? Yung ngayon sa story, tatlo. Isa sa balikat, isa sa chan, isa sa tuhod. Oh, Pero okay. sa original ko, woods. nakalima pa siya. Nakalimang baril. <laughs> <laughs> Tsaka yung ganda, no? yung sinasabi ko sa mga nanonood sa atin ngayon. No? Kanina kasi nag-uusap ko ni Direk Eric. No? Sabi ko ako personally, medyo critical ako pag yung journalism theme yung movie. Siguro dahil galing sa industriya. No? Kasi napapansin ko yung most of the movies, may, may tendency to romanticize the characters. And hindi ganun kalaling yung research involved. Kaya yung character nila medyo malabnaw. No? Dito, when I saw Sisoy, sabi ko, he is the real thing. Yan yung journalist talaga na makikita nyo. Yan yung malalaking IDs. Ang pinagkaiba lang ni Sisoy, he he was a legit journalist no di ba meron siya idealism tapos talagang he fell he fell off and then talagang napariwara yes. and then nagising siya no ang ganda-ganda ng mga characters even yung kay Joey Marquez no idealistic pero jaded naglalaban <laughs> naging naging magkakabuti na lang di ba oo inya <laughs> ito yung very very authentic lahat ng characters tapos walang attempt to romanticize kasi di ba ang daling i-connect nung ano maganda na massacre doon sa ano sa missing eight Oh. Pero hindi siya yung predictable na o oh, may pinatay. Ito yun, no? Parang ang lalim ng pagkakakarakterize, eh. Pati yung karakter ni Lot Lot, grabe. Oo. Oh, oh, so, ganda, babalik ganda. pala sila lahat. Yes. And and I'm introducing a new character, a super big star. Uh, that Kasi, syempre, if it's a second season, you wanna see a fresh face, di ba? Mm. In the story. So, we're bringing in a new character um, na big star into the story. And maganda rin yung tatakboy ng kwento niya based but, on sa gam. Secret pa ba ako sino yung big star na yan? Oh, hindi ko pa ma- hindi ko pa ma- <laughs> <laughs> Hindi pa. Hindi pa. Pero uh, para lang may hint kayo, in the last two days, there's an interview of a big star and she announced that she'll be doing a project with me. So, ikaw na mag-isip kung sino. Ako, mapapa-research ako niyan right after this interview. <laughs> Ah, so babae siya. Magiging central siya rin sa, ano, doon sa season 2. Oo, kwan din. Parang ensemble din. So, she will take part in one part of the story. Uh, kasi, di ba, if you look at On the Job, wala naman talagang one anchor na, oh, na character. Okay. It, it really is spread all over with several characters. Mm-hmm. So, nagko-flow siya, no? From one character to another. Eh, oh, nga, hindi hard sell yung kay, ano, yung kay Joel Torre. Hindi hard sell yung karakter niya rin eh. Di ba usually iba sabihin, oh, meron siyang human side eh. Hindi, ito oh, very raw eh. Oh, Talagang sa Jaya, no? yung not to oversell oh, the, the human side of the character. Yun nga, I think the research brought that in. Kasi nga, kung if we didn't do the research, it would be just another bang-bang movie. No? Na parang yung mga tropes, 
parang base lang sa ibang pelikula. Pero because we went into research, parang we discovered a lot more things, no? Uh, how tough it is for for the prisoner to somehow go back. Minsan nagko-connect-connect sa pamilya. Um, nagiging mahirap din para sa kanila. Even sa journalist, Christian, uh, I casted several great actors, but it's not easy to let them imbibe kung ano ba talaga ang pagiging journalist. So what we ended up doing, if you look at Sisoy um, and uh, Lot Lot, mm. I, I would usually, even Pedring, I would usually send them videos of people I think uh, are where their characters are based from. No? For example, oh, hindi ko masabi kung sino si Sisoy kasi baka ma... ma <laughs> pero I'm sure you have an idea kung sino, sino siya. He's a composite of probably two or three, two or three journalists. No? Si... Oh, I would say siguro five. Five I've met. <laughs> Kaya tonto ako sa karakter ni Sisoy. Sabi ko, ito yung mga nakakasalubong ko, nakakasama ko sa press conference. Here and in the provinces. Very very authentic. Uh, tapos, si, si Lot Lot, uh, from, from the outset, gusto ko talaga siya as Chara Zembrano. Eh, na parang, na parang ganun karakter. Uh, uh, na ganun karakter. So even costuming, we sent, I sent a lot of pictures of Chara to, to Lot Lot, no? Uh, and, yeah, pala and yung even, sleeves na naka-fold up sleeves. Yung pala yun. Oo, oh, gano'n, di ba? <laughs> Tapos naka-checkered lagi, di ba? Naka-cargo pants. No? Yun. Si Lot Lot kasi ang, ang naalala ko sa character niya, ito yung parang newsroom mom she. Uh-uh. Yes. Yung parang she, she looks after the newsroom tapos meron siyang sense of reality dun sa nangyayari sa loob, di ba? Mm-hmm. Tsaka napaka, ano, ang ganda ng characterization yung nangyayari sa newsroom. Ganun yun, di ba? Yung nalulugi yung ano, Oh, oh, oh. Yung newsroom, oh, oh. totoo yun eh. Oh, oh. Tapos yung hindi mo alam kung kailan susunod yung sweldo nila, di ba? Y- yan po yung nangyayari sa mga community papers ngayon, sa mga community news organizations. Mabigat po yung problema. Kaya ang ganda-ganda na, na, ano, may, na lumabas siyang lumutang sa on the job. Oh. Y- yun po nga, yung season 2, how, how many ano, episodes yan? The season 2 is also 6. Six. Six. six episodes, yeah. That's close to one hour then. One hour din yan. Uh, one hour per episode. Mm. Eh dito, teka, kailan pala yung pilian ng Oscars, no? Yung, yung, yung mga papa... Di ba may shortlisting yan, tapos pipili ng lima tamo? Shortlisting is around December. And then the next information that's coming up will be the nominations, which is January. And then awards na. Eh, ano yan? Kumusta naman yung tingin nyo rin sa ano? Siyempre, lahat tayo proud dyan eh, no? Pero, uh, what do you think of the, uh, of the lot? Uh-oh. Kami, kami proud din. Pero, siyempre, ang dami na nating magandang pelikula ang pinadala doon. Yung pinakamahirap talaga na i-hurdle is yung paano mapapansin ng Academy members who will vote for the, for the category yung film mo. Kasi kung like now around 70 yata yung entries 70 countries no mm. so pag wala ka sa radar nila hindi ka nila mapapanood talaga di ba um, that's why this coming november 10 we will be going to the producers and i are going to LA to do a few screenings uh, may isang festival din na nakapasok uh, tayo doon sa LA so timely lang no? And so we're going to go around and maybe find uh, academy members, give them a chance to see the film, invite sila. Uh, kasi wala namang assurance. Pero gusto mo lang na maraming makapanood. Diba? Mm-hmm. And, and Pero makita. Kasi yun. talo ang agad pag hindi na panood eh. Oo, talo agad. Diba? Mm-hmm. So big part pala niyan yung ano kasi daw familiar sa ano sa industry na yan no? so kailangan talaga ng matinding lobbying din dun sa people who matter for them to get to see your yeah. film it's very important to create buzz yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Eh pag ganyan di kailangan meron kayong isang ano isang <laughs> well oiled PR or marketing machine machinery ba pag ganyan yeah. that's, that's what we're working on before leaving 
Um, not just that for the Oscars, but also with the Emmys. Emmys is going to be November 21. We're mm. also part of four nominate, nominees. So nominated na as a series, as a limited series. Nominated yung on the job along with a British series, a French series, and a Chile, uh, a series made in Chile. So there's only four nominees. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh. we're going there to attend the event. No? Oh, sana uh, namin alam. Tayo, pero tingnan natin. Oh. Yeah, para direct, um, uh, how did you get involved with, uh, with HBO? Uh, Meron din kayong ginawa it, recently, di ba? Yung Folklore. Yung isang episode mm-hmm. doon, tama ba? Season 2. Yes. Ito ko sa Pero prior to, that, uh, prior to that, HBO did a series that centers on food, which is Food Lore. Mm. That was way back in 2018. And we shot it in 2019. Um, food Lore is about each country, parang Folklore din. Eight countries, eight directors talking about their food culture in their own respective countries. And HBO picked me to represent the Philippines, mm. which we eventually won in the Asian um, Asian Creative Awards. We eventually won the best pick, the best uh, show and then the best director. I don't know. So from there... Um, Parang magkakilala kami ng HBO somehow, no? And then, the next year, they also got me to, to be involved in Folklore, which I also did. Tapos, pagkatapos nun, when we didn't know what to do with On The Job, which is 3 hours and 28 minutes na film, and nag-pivot kami para gawing series, the first uh, company I thought of to send the the first cut was HBO, uh, hoping mm. that they would be interested in something like this. Hindi kayo nag parang nagkaroon discussions with Netflix naman? Uh, meron kami discussion with Netflix. When they heard about the budget, our budget is around 112 million. Uh, and without even looking at the film, uh, the series, they immediately said, we can't afford it. But, Grabe naman sila. Uh, Sorry sila yeah. ngayon. <laughs> Hindi, pero after that, nagkuan din sila, nag-reach out sila nung, nung hindi pa kami nagtatapos ng HBO. Uh, when they heard about uh, Venice, they, they wanted to see it again. Mm. Nga pala ito, uh, alam ko busy kayo direct eh, pero <laughs> ang ganda kasi nung pinag-uusapan Wala, natin. Okay no? lang, go. Yung pinag-uusapan niya mga streaming services na yan, no? iba, iba yung sinasabi, is cinema dying as a format or as a business model? An- anong tingin niyo, tingin niyo rito? Especially with the pandemic, no, two years of lockdown, talagang yeah. mas na ano, mas na na cultivate yung ano, streaming culture natin, no? yung s- viewing right, natin right. through streaming. What do you think of this? Yeah, even as early as 2018, Christian, I was already posting rants on Facebook, on Instagram, about how not just cinema globally, but really in the Philippines, how our cinema is dying, no. Uh, or or if not dead na nga, no and then the pandemic happened it's dead because number one we couldn't get access to the cinemas unless you're a big ten pole movie like marvel or mm-hmm. locally if you're not vice ganda or if you're not uh, uh, coco martin hindi ka makakakuha ng sinehan no if you're just even on the job, without the accolades of on the job, just just by the the title itself and with the violence involved in it, but probably hindi kami makakuha ng sinehan, no? Talaga. So, Kahit may piyolo, Pascual, kayo dyan? Ha? Kahit may piyolo. Oo, nung simula na yun, hindi, hindi siya ganun kalaki. Kasi dark, hmm. matilim, uh, hmm. seryoso yung tema, walang comedy, walang love story. Hmm. Di ba? So, iniisip nila, ah, limited lang audience niyan. Tapos, R18 pa. Ito ngayon, R16 tayo, no? Ay, pag ganyan, wag na. Konti lang yung audience niyan, no? So, kahit nung time na yun pa lang, yes, there were still films showing na mga Bea, John Lloyd, mga ganun-ganun. Pero, 
they're few and far between, and it's only limited to star cinema. Mm -hmm. No one else can get access to the cinemas, no, except a star cinema movie. Diba? So, mahirap. And then the pandemic happened, true enough, it changed the landscape. Everybody stayed home. Nobody wants to be in a confined space. Uh, Nag-tighten ng belts lahat. Ayaw na gumastos ng pang popcorn, pang soft drinks, di ba? Hot dog. Kung sad, <laughs> oh, kung sad yung mga streaming, wherein you pay $150, si Disney just announced, di ba? They're launching in December. It's at $149 pesos. Eh, ang sinihan magkano? $360, $380. Isang viewing, oo, oh, tama. Papasok ka pa, check in ka pa ng guard, baka pasuotin ka pa ng mask, di ba? Kung mm -hmm. ano, rather than mm -hmm. convenience, di ba? So, nag-iba yung, nag, nag, nag yung, yung mindset ng tao kung paano manood. And now, of course, we don't want the, the cinema to die. Ay ayaw natin, di ba? But how can we get out of that rut. Kasi nga, wala namang, wala nang nagagawang malaking pelikula kasi lahat ng producers takot. That's why ang, ang thinking nga namin, the only way to bring back uh, yung audience na Pinoy sa sinihan is when we come up with a spectacle movie. Spectacle like meaning, makonvince ma sila na uh, pumunta sa sinihan kasi dapat sa sinihan natin panoorin yan. Diba? Mm. It should be epic. It should be big. It should it should uh, wow them. It should be a bit more eye candy. But still having a really good story. So, but you need but budget for that. Oh, malaking budget dapat. Para ma-entice mo yung audience na lumabas sa mga bahay nila. Kasi kung, kung rom-com na naman yan, Magbukas ka mm. ng Netflix, bukas ka ng Amazon, bukas ka ng HBO. Dami. Ang dami na dyan eh. Ba't naman mm. lalabas ka pa, di ba? Uh -oh. So, so uh, that's why everyone's eyes are on MMFF this year. Because last year's MMFF bummed, really bummed, as in dead. No one watched it. No one went in to see it. So this one is another go at it. So, try sila ulit na, sige, tingnan natin, di ba? And they have the names to go with it. They have Vice Ganda. They have a Coco movie. They have uh, Nadine Lustre. Andyan, lahat ng names. So, everyone's watching it. All the producers are watching it. If it's gonna have legs, if it's gonna make money this December, then maybe cinema is back. Pero, pag nag yan, that might even be the last of MMFF. One, and it's about time we need to rethink what kind of movies we make. Because hindi lang naman yan big stars. Eh. The pandemic taught us so many things. We were we had access sa mga ibang klasing kwento, bagong kwento na hindi lang rom com, gay comedy, at yung nakasanayan natin, no, na melodrama, hindi lang ganon. Because of the pandemic, it gave us access to all these streamers na iba-iba yung mga kwento. Uh, mm -hmm. High concept, uh, malalim, may iba, uh, hindi mo napapanood na bagay sa Pilipinas, pero di ba, interesting ang kwento. So, it will change the way the audience taste is towards movies. And so, so, crucial yung MMFF. Ha? Mm -hmm. huh? Crucial yung Metro Manila Afraid Film Festival. Pe pero yung nga, pero practically ba sa tingin nyo, da dapat mag-shift mag na more into streaming talaga? Baka naman kasi magiging obsolete yung cinema experience uh, eventually. I think cinema will continue. I mean, it's not gonna die. But streaming is really there and it's there to stay. But um, if we were to parang think of the future of streaming right now all these streamers are busy getting the best talents in every country no hbo netflix lots sila vying disney lots sila sige let's get everyone to do it come two years time or three years time na may dalawa lang na nag survive dyan na malaki diba the one that really dominated the market 
yung iba niyan will also tighten their belts and will not have as many productions. Di ba? Uh, yun yung so, ganun din. No. Oo. Parang so, natural yun selection. Na, Oo, tama. Di ba? So, again, magpapalance off yun with the cinema. Um, mm. yung mga Medyo malungkot yung ano, no? Pero sana hindi naman mamatay yung ano. At least yung cinema experience itself, no? <laughs> malungkot na kayong ondan dyan. Malungkot pa yung cinema. <laughs> Inga, tsaka minsan parang ano eh. Parang chicken and egg yung situation eh, no? Sasabihin. Oo, yes. Pinabalikan ko yung mga dating interviews eh. Diba yung sinasabi nyo na ano? Kasi diba comment complaint ng Ordinary Filipino? Eh, pangit naman kasi ng production nito eh. Diba? Hindi realistic. Yung set design pa lang parang school project, diba? Okay. Hmm. Eh, sabi nyo, bigyan kayo ng budget. Not, not si Mrs. Director Eric Matia. I mean, yung iba. Kasi yun sa kanya maganda yung production eh. Pero iba, di ba? Bigyan generally ng Hollywood budget. Eh, they can come up with Marvel-like, ano, Mar- Marvel level yung production, di ba? So, yung ganyan. Diyan pumapasok yung recent discussion, di ba? Yung sabi ng isang senador. Although, kumambi siya afterward, no? Out of frustration daw. Kasi kulang daw sa suporta yung movie industry. Eh, parang isa sa mga measure sa tinitin, dapat pa iba na lang yung mga Korean dramas. Yung ganyan. Ano, ano bang tingin nyo dyan? Will, will no. that help you somehow minimize the, minimize the, the, the competition to, to let the domestic market grow or industry? Na-misinterpret na ako dyan. I, I made... Uh, ang problema ko kasi sa tweet, ang iksi, hindi mo pwede mawalagay lahat ng thoughts mo, no? So, I ended up... That I already talked about that years ago. Because at the boom of the K-dramas, for example, nung nag-boom yung K-drama, nalungkot ako for us. Kasi nga, it's accessible, it's interesting, it's fresh, di ba? Magan- masaya pa na orin. Mm-hmm. And alam ko na talaga na madidehado yung Pilipino. Di ba? But it shouldn't be banned. But Ang feeling ko, uh, it shouldn't be banned. Ang feeling ko kami, di ba? The producers, everyone's trying to work, work around trying to get the Korea uh, model of filmmaking wherein the government subsidizes producers to come up with beautiful looking, uh, well thought out, yung parang mahaba ang pinag-isipan ng mga projects. I think the government should step up. The government should step up. Hindi lang yan wishful thinking na edi galingan nyo. No? Hindi lang mm-hmm. enough na galingan ng lahat. Eh. Kundi there has to be resources equal to, to Korea's resources. Look at Korea. Ang Korean uh, TV series is funded like a US TV series. Mm-hmm. So budget, minimum... Eh. Minimum per episode is probably $4 million. Magkano sa $4 million? Dollars? Sa atin? Uh, for me. Dito sa atin, per day ng mga teleserye, ABS or GMA, swerte na maka 2 mil- 2.5 million pesos ka a day. Uh, everything na yun. Uh, so, times 5 ng 2, uh, 2 million. Lagay mo na 2 million times uh, one day. Oh, so bali five episodes in one week, parang kulang-kulang mga three, four million per per episode. Wow. So talaga ka, no? Low budget? Low budget. So sa ganyan, uh, talaga ka, no? Mm-hmm. Yung count nila ng episode, one week, ha? So, di ba 30 minutes, 30 minutes, lumalabas yung teleserye natin? Yung oh. one week na yan, that's one episode. So, spread out mo yung mga 3 million na yan, 3.5 na yan, dyan, sa limang araw na yan. And i-compare mo sa, for example, Korea, we're in 4 million dollars times 60, that's uh, 240 million. 240 million pesos per episode. Di ba? Wow. Kaya pala. Tama ba? Kasi yung isip ko dati, pinanood ko yung ano, The World of the Married, no? yung remake ng Korean. Sabi, ang ganda nito. Isang episode pa lang, siksik na siksik. Nung pinanood ko yung, yung Philippine adaptation, ang ganda rin in fairness lahat eh. No? Kasi sabi ko lang, parang pinapahaba. 
Oo. Uh-huh. Ang ganda rin eh. Pero sabi ko, parang parang may, may bubblegum ano, effect. <laughs> Pinapahaba ng konti. Inestretch yung kwento. Inestretch yung kwento. Tama ba? Y- yun ang feeling ko eh. So, I suppose siguro that, that also had to do with budget, no? Hindi, pero not just budget. Pero pag tinignan mo rin yung mga teleserye, the design is really to extend the plots. Ba- bakit? Kasi, Di ba pa, no, minipis na yun masyado? Hindi, kasi imagine mo, in terms of story, you're doing 2.5 hours of story every week. Hmm. Diba? So parang isang pelikula every week. Oh, Ang daming ano? kwento nun. Mm-hmm. Oo. So, ninipisan mo yung kwento, tapos habaan mo ng habaan. Kaya kuminsan si Provinciano, di ba, puro zoom in. Ala, ala, hanggang sa mag-commercial. Di ba? <laughs> <laughs> para hindi kaya mo na pag-alap ng kwento basta alam mo lang tulala finally, sila lahat <laughs> finally someone said it <laughs> perfectly <Yeah. laughs> ang haba eh sabi ko ako yung probinsya ge- ge- ano, geographic talaga nakapag around the world na yun sa haba eh uh, pero yan how, how do we solve this kasi nga Siyempre, ang weird naman nung suggestion ng iba, di ba? Iba yung ano, iba yung, yung k-drama. Tapos sabi ng isang senador na artista, eh, mas pogi naman tayo dyan. Ako per se, I think ano yan eh, parang false sense of nationalism or yeah. patriotism. Yeah. Uh, Pe- pero right. sa atin kasi, what can we do uh, 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 as, uh, no, it, as government? Everyone, mm-hmm. yeah. oh, yan, everyone, sige, everyone has to recognize, everyone has to recognize, number one, Korea has much more resources. Okay, given na yan. They have more time to develop their stories. Okay. They have more time to concentrate on how to fully flesh out characters and story. Diba? Sa atin, diba? Kwan tayo eh. Uh, ratings game. So, mm-hmm. walang enough time uh, para planuhin yung script kasi nagre-react tayo sa Mexico yung kwan natin eh. Mexican telenovela yung format natin eh. Oh. The ratings are more important than the flow of the story. So kung ang flow ng story mo, di ba, umiyak yung bida, sa next episode, sa the next day, ang reklamo ng lahat, ba't siya umiyak? Tatanggalin na, mag-iisip ka na ng paraan na hindi na siya umiyak ulit, di ba? <laughs> Tunari tayo eh. Si, si Korea, uh, mahabaan. And they stick to it. They finish it. They can it. They trust their story and they complete it. Diba? Oh. Hindi na, we cannot afford that because of the ratings game? We cannot afford that because ratings game. No? Ah, dahil kung so, bumenta, pumatok, pahabain. Oo. And then, of course, budgets. Diba? Like see, Broken Marriage Vow, I'm sure, I'm sure they would want it to be like a Korean series or even start up. Pero siyempre, the budgets don't allow it for them. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, ito nga, nakakatawa si, si Bong Joon-ho, who was the jury in Venice Film Fest last year. Sat no, down at our table. Pinuri yung mm-hmm. yeah. movie then, nyo. Sabi, oh, sabi niya, so how many days did you shoot it? So, sabi ko, we shot uh, on the job, missing eight for 53 days. Parang, gulat na gulat siya na gano'n lang ka-exe. Di ba? Looking at a 3-hour, 28-minute film. Sabi niya, how did you do that? Di ba? Uh, 53 days for such a, a huge project. Sabi ko, well, that, that's how we do it in the Philippines. Uh, wow. We we try our best to to fit it within the resources that we're allowed with. No? Wow, talagang uh, Filipino yung ginawiti, so, no? So, so parang chicken or the egg yung yung korea issue na yan no because oh, everyone admires the korean content diba no one saying hindi siya maganda mm. pero it it shows us what's lacking in ourselves <laughs> kaya kaya ko minsan like ako rin diba ako nalulungkot ako diba na parang uh, my siblings Uy, napanood mo yung ganito, Juan? Uh, uh, Korean series. Uh, lahat ng kapatid ko, Korean series yung pinapanood. So, nalulungkot ka na parang, when will we ever be at a point where uh, everyone's rooting for a Tagalog 
series or even Tagalog movie kasi alam mo naman pagka western natin lalabas tayo para sa Spider-Man lalabas tayo para sa Iron Man pero pag may lumabas na Tagalog movie na maganda no matter what the word of mouth is walang lumalabas kasi para ay patuy di ba ay ganun Uh, ako, ako kasi direct mababaw ang luha ko eh. <laughs> naiyak ako dun sa ano eh, dollhouse eh. Nung pinalig ko ulit, uh, naiyak na naman ako. Sabi ko, ano bang klaseng tao ako? <laughs> alam ko na yung ending eh. Alam ko na yung sasabihin ni Baron Geisler eh. Speak uh, of Khan, no? Isa sa mga pinakaayo ko na lately kasi masyadong plakado talaga yung mga Hollywood movies, no? Yung mga Dwayne Johnson movies. Huwag naman magagalit yung mga fans in the rock. Okay. Hindi ko siya matagalan. Either Netflix or ngayon hindi ko pa pinapanood yung ano eh, yung Black Adam. Parang alam mo mm. na yung mangyayari. Parang well, very template yung, ano, yung approach. Yung, yung formula naman kasi ng mga Dwayne Johnson is closer to the kind of films na parang Kevin Hart. Yung parang mm, tama. Um, pure entertainment siya eh. Di ba? Popcorn movie. So oh. parang anipis lang. Hindi masyado malalim yung kwento. Di ba? Up to this level lang. Mataas yung entertainment value pero hindi naman ganong bago yung kwento. Uh, alam mo yun? And they, they shower you with eye candy visual effects uh, mm. in lieu of uh, a deeper story or a better theme. Tsaka predictable dialogue, no? Although may maganda si, ano, si Kevin Hart uh, sa Netflix. I forgot the title. Yung ano, ano story yun? ng pagiging celebrity. Yung ano, oh, sa stand-up comedian. Ang ganda yun. Ang ganda yun. yun eh. Meron siyang... Ah, actually, yeah. enjoy ko rin pati yung kwan eh. Yung kay Mark Wahlberg, yung silang, ano? napalit mo yan, silang dalawa, yung na comedy. best friend. Ah, oh, yung best comedy friend, yung, yung every uh, birthday, in-invite niya si, ano, si uh, Kevin nakatawa. Hart, kaso pamilyadong tao na. Ah, uh, nakakatawa. Oh. Kayo, kayo ba direct, ano rin kayo, fan kayo ng, ano, ng K-drama, nanonood din kayo? Or not much? K-drama, well, hindi masyado. <laughs> ah, oo. Oh. Hindi kasi hindi inisip ko, kasi, uh, Maliwanag naman yung problema ng ano no nung nung production ng resources kulang na kulang sa atin eh. Pero in terms of storytelling, uh, in terms of talent, pwede ba sabihin na behind tire dito sa mga Koreans or any other countries with more budget? I mean in terms of temperament for example, kasi binanggit niyo medyo similar yung model natin sa Mexico. Ako kasi nung growing up watching yung, yung mga marimar na yan, 'di ba? Tsaka yung mga oh. Filipino series. Sabi ko may pagkakapareho sa temperament, no? I don't know, yeah. siguro dahil merong ano, Latin American flavor yung, yung Filipino. No? Pero mm-hmm. compared, let's say, with Koreans, meron ba tayong pagkakapareho? Or parang medyo I, disruptive yung Korean in the sense na medyo iba siya? I'm a, I'm a big fan of Korean films. I watch every Korean films that come my way as much as I could. Diba? I'm big fans of Park Chan-wook, Bong Joon-ho. Diba? Uh... And in terms of culture, parang pare, medyo pareho tayo eh. I think you can see that in the in the influx of Koreans finding lives here in the Philippines. Diba? They, they can relate to us. No? Uh, not, just in, not just in how fun we are as a people na pareho rin sa kanila, but also in terms of how we deal with violence, how we deal with crime. Medyo magkakamatch tayo eh. In fact, Christian, I'm working on a Korean-Filipino series uh, that we are currently writing. No, uh, Primarily because when, when I presented it to producers, the producer asked, why Korea and Philippines together? No, Why not Filipino and America? Why not... Filipinos and and French kasi nga nakikita ko yung yung similarity natin sa ugali no mm-hmm. uh, yung yung pagka boisterous yung pagka yung uh, mabilis na paglabas ng bugso ng damdamin di ba mm-hmm. uh, Saka magalang Oh magalang Saka culture magalang tayo pareho Ano yan set in the Philippines or in Korea in the Philippines a set in Korea. Set in Korea with Filipino characters and Korean characters. It's a series. Kailan po ilalabas siya direct? Wala pa. Kung pa lang. 
writing stage pa lang. We're hoping to probably work on it uh, early 2024. Mm. Direct, basahin ko lang ibang mga tanong sa inyo. No? Uh, yeah. May nakahula ng big uh, celebrity na kasama sa second part. Ano? Series 2 ng ano? second season. Ha? Tama ba, Vilma Santos? <laughs> 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 Mali ba? Napag-google ako eh. Ni Ate B, iba yung contact namin. Ah, iba yun. Nalungkot naman ako. Pero I'm sure magaling din yung ano, no? yung isa. Ako kasi narealize ko, ano pala ako eh, Closet Vilmanian eh. <laughs> Mas parayo pala ako napanood ng Vilma. Ang galing eh. May isa siyang ano. May isa siyang ano. Parang gusto ko siya maging nanay, di ba? <laughs> ang galing. May isa siyang movie yung ano, yung extra. Hindi siya masyadong sumikit. Ang ganda-ganda ng movie. Oh, yung extra. Ang role niya extra. Yeah, Tapos yeah. meron, oo, oh, tas yung isa naman yung talagang kinikilabutan ako, yung The Healing. The Healing, Chito Ronyo. Oo, oh, grabe. Oh, yung panoor niya sa mga ka. nanonood dito. <laughs> okay, ah. <laughs> ano pala ako. Hindi, hindi, hindi ko dinedepo yung sarili ko as Noranyan or Bill Manyan, pero nung yeah. binabalikan ko yung mga napanood ko, mas Bill Masantos pala ako talaga. <laughs> Eto Doc, uh, may nagtatanong, ay, direct pala, sorry. Si Chino Figueroa, is the OJT Hollywood remake still happening? Meron ba? Yes. Um, well, this is what happened. Immediately after 2013, Universal opened the film for a remake uh, with uh, Baltazar Cormacor, the, the director of Everest, and marami nang ginawa yan. And he also did uh, a few series for Netflix. Baltasar Kormakor attached as director and then Mark Wahlberg. Mm. They developed it. They optioned it for uh, 18 months. 18 months. And they weren't able to come up with a script, which, which I definitely know. Yun din, no nag kami, I was telling them, you know how difficult it is for you guys to come up with a story like that in the U.S.? Primarily because the U.S. prison system is private. So, mm-hmm. hindi pwede yung, yung ganitong setup ng OTJ sa U.S. Unless your story starts in Mexico. Oo, oh, medyo ano. They brought out the prison from Mexico. So, they weren't able to develop anything. And then, um, 2018... Uh, SK Global, the producers of uh, Crazy Rich Asians, also commissioned an option for the rights to do a remake of On the Job. You know? So they optioned it again for 18 months. And in 18 months, hindi nila na develop yung script. Right now, uh, Baltazar Kormakor has gone back again and said, I really want to do the movie. So we are now fixing the new option for the remake of On the Job in the US through Baltasar Kormakor. Yeah, kaso parang paano nila ikakapture ng reality nun. This is very, ano, very Filipino, no? Y- yun ang minsan ang ano, oh. eh, disadvantage ng advanced democracies. No? Kunwari, prison system... <coughs> Ang hirap naman oh, na makawala oh. yung yung prison inmate, di ba? Para pumatay. Parang hindi siya realistic sa American system. No? E sa atin, hindi ka magtataka. Oh. Kumusta kayo, Direk? O kala, nangyayari talaga yan. Oh, <laughs> Nahulo. <laughs> eh, na ano? Na, nabuhusan ng kape yung ano nyo? Oh, ay, sandali. Nam- namatay? Oo, Wait. namatay. Oo. Ako, alagaan niyo yung ano nyo, laptop nyo. Nangyari sa akin yan, nabuhusan. <clears throat> dami, dami, dami nag enjoy sa interview natin direct. Eh, no? Ito, may Ayon. mga nanghuhula eh. <clears throat> okay. Love you po ba? May nanghuhula eh. Love you po. <laughs> Hindi. Tinag din lang ako. She did an interview yesterday. Mm. Charon ko neta. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mali, mali, mali yung hula niya. Ayoko na, baka, baka ano na ako, mag-strike out na ako. Mali yung Bill Masantos ko eh. 
eto uh, direct ito uh, ito to may isang tanong si J Amihan what happened sa unang teaser trailer ng OTJ sequel ng 2016 yung nandoon si Bella Padilla ganda rin kasi nung trailer na yon yeah it's it's the same script except that when we did the research took us one year and a half to write the script so when that happened the actors moved on Uh, with the project as, as a project so we ended up having to recast the roles ito mm. uh, uh, direct kailan daw palalabas yung on the job movie the the first one or the second one the, yung yung ah, ngayon yung one, oh, yung movie version of missing eight yeah on the job the missing eight will be showing november 2 to no- november 8 in um, ayala cinemas in metro manila And then there's Pampanga and Bacolod uh, na theaters din ng Ayala. Ito. Hmm. Finally, direct, Papa. Kawalan na namin kayo. Alam ko, busy-busy kayo. Oh. Tsaka baka kinakabahan kayo sa tumapon sa laptop nyo. I know the feeling. <laughs> Nangyari sa akin yan. Should we... Ito, personal question ko to, no? Kasi mahilig ako sa mga, yung, mga political thriller, no? Yung crime stories sa ganyan. Should we be doing more, more of these? For example, yung political thriller or drama. given the realities that we have in the Philippines, para I suppose hindi tayo kukulangin ng material eh. Yes. Uh, um, I, I really gravitate towards uh, political thrillers. I'm a big fan of 70s na mga paranoia films, no? All the President's Men, uh, Three Days of the Condor, mga ganong movies, Marathon Man, ni Dustin Hoffman. And uh, if, if you look at On the job one and two, they're straight off of 70s films. And I really think uh, yung kultura natin talaga is open uh, for materials like those. Uh, marami talaga tayo mahuhugot. And what's great about it, if it's depicted on cinema, is because uh, ibang iba talaga yung, yung kultura natin when it comes to... Uh, the corruption in the government, yung how violence is treated, and it it looks fresh globally. When whenever we import our films globally, yung mga nanonood are surprised that such things could happen, no? Na kasi mm-hmm. we're so aware of how Americans treat the, the the first world, not just not just the Americans, the first world, how they treat yung mga ganyan, no? It's a bit more subtle, it's a bit more elegant, no? Uh, there's a strong sense of decency, quote-unquote, di ba? Pero sa atin, parang ang daming bulatlat, ang daming parang diretsahan, no? In your mm-hmm. face, that kind of surprises you, no? That such things could happen. Even just the, the statement ng on the job, the missing eight, na yung kung irarap up ko yung In one sentence, this is a movie uh, that depicts politicians as gangsters. In the U.S., ang, ang politicians, ang gangsters doon, gangsters talaga, di ba? They remain in the shadows, underground sila. Sa atin, uh, the gangsters have become legit and have become politicians. And uh, sila, the same politicians are the ones also involved in gangster gangsterism so uh, ang ang ganda lang siyang from a cinematic point of view of course hindi siya maganda no pag iniisip mo pero from a cinematic point of view it's it's a good material to mine wow well said very dark pero perfectly said no <laughs> sa political science kasi meron silang tinatawag na bossism in the philippines no in sa inyo mas matindi gangsterism <laughs> Direct, maraming salamat. And I suppose medyo nakagraduate na yung mga first world uh, perspective sa mga third world na kailangan poverty porn for them to be for for us to be noticed on the global stage. So, hindi na gano, no? Kailangan yung matitin yung mga uh, moments. Oh, parang mo- everyone's avoiding it na rin. No? Oo. Uh, kasi uh, we have so much more to offer than yes. <laughs> yung exploitative na poverty porn. Direct, maraming maraming salamat. I really appreciate this. Thank you you taking, your, taking time to, to be with us. And maraming, ano, uh, very enlightening po. 
Direct, maraming maraming salamat. Looking forward to your, uh, papanoorin ko to, definitely. Big yes. fan of your work, uh, specifically ito, ano, on the job. So, yes. Thank Director you. Eric Mati, maraming maraming salamat po, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening, everyone. Bye-bye. Mm, yan. Oh, kumusta ba? Nag-enjoy ba kayo sa ating interview with the Director Eric Mati? Maganda at least nakikita niya yung perspective niya, yung temperament niya dun sa ginagawa niya. No? Pero yun nga, November 2 to 8 ang showing nung ano, yung film version, movie version ng On the Job, The Missing 8. Ang ganda-ganda ng series po niya sa HBO. Dun sa mga hindi nakapanood ng HBO series. At sabi niya, magkakaroon season 2 with a big celebrity involved. Ayan. Panoorin niya yung movie, ang ganda-ganda. And uh, marami kayo marirealize doon sa situation na meron tayo ngayon. Okay? So maraming maraming salamat po for joining us tonight. Uh, na late si Francis ko, no? Pwede mo naman panoorin pa ito, no? <laughs> Nabitin si Raquelita, Raquelita Regondola. Ayan. Sana more of this, sabi ni Bel. Oo, sige. Ayan. Nabitin si Jay Amihan. Sorry na. Nahiya ako kay Direk eh. Natapunan yata ng kape laptop niya. Pag hindi ko pa pinakawalan, baka masira yun. Ayun. So, sabi ni Nenen Rolita, uh, very informative. Yan. Yan naman po ang goal natin. Yung nga po, again, maraming maraming salamat dahil at least based on your comments, nakikina, napapakinabangan niyo yung mga content natin, yung, yung ginagawa natin dito. Actually, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of people, let's say, describing what we do as vlogging. No? Hindi naman to vlogging eh. Basically, this is journalism on a new platform, on a different platform. In this case, YouTube. Oh. Mas, mara, mag, nagpapasalamat nga tayo dahil meron ganitong platform. Dahil at least alam nyo na hindi lang tayo confined doon sa television, so sa print, sa jario for example. Ito kasi yung mga platform sa pinanggalingan ko eh. No? I started sa print, 15 years ako dyan, no? sa Inquirer. Tapos I spent 5 uh, years uh, sa ABS-CBN. And then marami ako natutunan na cross-platforms. Eh. Doon ko nakikita na itong bagong uh, digital platforms available to all of us, na hindi lang po sa mga journalists, can be harnessed for for better journalism. So itong ginagawa natin, ay, I, I, don't, I don't consider this as vlogging. This is basically journalism on a different platform, on YouTube, on Facebook. Doon sa mga lagi nagpapadala po ng mga super chat, super thanks, super stickers sa YouTube, tapos yung nagpapadala ng mga stars sa Facebook, maraming maraming salamat po. Yan po yung direct, ano, hindi lang po yan show of appreciation. No? At least you have a stake. Kung baga tawag sa inyo stakeholders. No? That's a direct interaction between the journalists, ako yun, tapos kayo, uh, bilang publiko, bilang audience, bilang information consumers. Doon yun na ipapakita yung pagsuporta nyo dito sa journalism na na naginagawa natin yun niya. so again you you ano you you try to get as many useful information as you can uh, across platforms hindi lang dito subukan niyo rin ibang mga channels on YouTube puntahan niyo rin yung ibang mga uh, news sources doon sa sa legacy or mainstream media tingnan niyo kung ano yung mapapakinabangan niyo no of course mapapansin niyo lang kasi galing ako diyan sa legacy media no talaga may mga restrictions yan may mga business models which can actually work against the interest of journalism. Dito sa YouTube, well, yeah, we can afford uh, to hold nothing back. Yan ang maganda sa, sa bagong plataforma. Ayun. Ayan o. Panuri mo the healing, sabi ni, ano, ni Fr- Friday. Maganda yung maniwala ka sa akin. <laughs> Tatakot ka. Yung Dollhouse, maganda. Nag-enjoy ko. I'm not uh, promoting that. Wala mo na akong stake sa mga ganyang movies. Eh. I'm just talking about that as a fan. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining us tonight. And uh, kita-kita po tayo sa next episode natin sa Friday. Ayan. Tingnan natin. Pag medyo mas ano, lumaki pa tayo, gawin na natin itong daily. No? Kung okay bang gawin itong daily every night. Uh, let me know kung ano yung tingin nyo dyan. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat po ulit and uh, thank you for watching this evening.